Hi everyone, this is Virginia with Butterfly Journey Human Services, Butterfly Journey Ministries, and Doers of the Word, Bible Study and Fellowship. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you can find time to look and listen at this brand new message that we are sharing with the nations. The Heavenly Father has really given me a revelational knowledge about a very famous scripture and passage that a lot of Christians and faith believers have read over over and over again. That includes myself. I have read these scriptures many times and I've been asking Heavenly Father, what does this mean? And we can go to Heavenly Father and ask him for his wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, understanding on how to apply, how to live his holy word. So let's open with prayer. And then we're going to get into this famous passage of scriptures that we probably learn as a child, hearing as a child, growing up and heard as an adult as well. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty Yahweh Elohim, Creator, King of the universes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father, for waking us up today. Thank you for watching over us as we were asleep, and thank you for the breath of life that you have restored back into our soul and our spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a roof over our head, clothes and shoes, the wear of transportation. Thank you for electricity, water. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your many blessings, past, present, and future. Thank you for those ones who have employment, those ones who got career and businesses. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. You are blessing them successfully. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for health and wellness and healing in our body, mind, soul, and spirit and finances, Heavenly Father. Help us to live holy, pure, and righteous as we are now seeking to serve, obey you, and love you for all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love our neighbors, we love ourselves as we are living in these days of Noah preparation journey, living in the last days and the end of this age and the days of Lot. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for your holy scriptures, your holy word, your holy Son, your Holy Presence, your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, as we are now embarking in this days of preparation journey that had started months, months and months ago, and it's going to last for years, Heavenly Father. We pray that we be found a good and faithful servant when the Messiah come, we be found doing your word, your will, and your way when your kingdom come upon the earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We just love you. We glorify you and praise you. Thank you for your Holy Scriptures, your Holy Message. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We can never thank you enough because you are awesome and you are powerful. You are loving and merciful, gracious, kindness. Lord Yahweh, we thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for this new message you have given me to share with everyone to prepare for what is coming upon the earth. In the name of Messiah, Yeshua, thank you, Holy Father. Amen, amen, amen. So we're in Luke chapter 8 and go to your holy scriptures, Luke chapter 8 and we're going to read some verses and then we're going to break it down go back into the scriptures as we do with the word bible study and fellowship like to study and meditate and get into his word deeper for more uh, more spiritual meaning how to apply his words in our life so if you go to luke chapter 8 and we're going to begin at verse 40 and i'm going to be going back and forth to Amplified and New American Standards. So starting with the Amplified in verse 40. Now, when Jesus came back to Galilee, the crowd received and welcomed him gladly, for they were all waiting and looking for him. Continue on. And there came a man named Jairus, who had for a long time been a director of the synagogue. And falling at the feet of Jesus, he begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. As Jesus went, the people pressed together around him, almost suffocating him. And a woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years and had spent all her living upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone, came up behind him. And touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood ceased. And Jesus said, Who is it who touched me? When all were denying it, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitudes around uh, surround you and press you on every side. But Jesus said, Someone did 
touch me, for I perceived that healing power has gone forth from me. And when the woman saw that she had not escaped notice, she came up trembling and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all the people for what reason she had touched him and how she had been instantly cured. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your confidence and trust in me has made you well. Go, enter into peace, untroubled, undisturbed well-being. So we're going to stop there for right now. That is verses 40 to 48. And this is a story that you and I probably heard as a child when we're going to church, a place of worship. We have heard as a young adult. As, a, as an uh, adult and an older adult, we heard many sermons and teachings about the woman who had the issue of blood. But as I was reading this in my word of God and my holy scriptures, as I do every day, as humble, obedient, clay, vessel, service, in your rooms will be reading their word, listen to the word of Almighty Yahweh every day. I asked Heavenly Father, how can we today in our generation, in our era, in this year of 2022 and beyond, touch the hem of Jesus Yeshua's garment. How can we touch the hem of Yeshua's garment today? Yeshua is not on the earth presently, physically on the earth. He's here in spirit. He is sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father right now. But Yeshua presence can be with us. But how can we physically and spiritually emotionally, mentally, even financially touch the hem of Yeshua's garment when he is not physically ple- present on the earth today. These are some questions and comments that I have asked the Heavenly Father in my spiritual devotional study time when I was reading these verses. And then as I do my throne room prayers, which is different from just sitting at a desk or a chair or a table studying and reading. I do throne room prayers. And so as I was doing my throne room prayers, the Heavenly Father gave me the revelation knowledge of how we, humble, obedient, clay, vessel, service, children, remnants, may touch the hem of Yeshua's garment in our generation, in our era, in our time today. So let's go back to verse 40. Okay, we're going to break down these verses. And I'm just getting my notes here. Verse 40. And this is from the New American. And as Jesus returned, the people welcomed him, for they all had been waiting on him or waiting for him. Continue reading onward, verse 41 and onward. And there came a man named Jairus, and he was an official of the synagogue. And he fell at Jesus' feet and began to implore him to come to his house. So these people all knew the things that Yeshua had done, is doing. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He healed lame and blind people. So these people are following Yeshua wherever he goes because they know of the power that he has from the Almighty Yahweh to do all these wonderful, miraculous works. And then all of a sudden, Jairus is someone of a notoriety person in the synagogue. He's an official of the synagogue, which is very interesting because usually some of the people in the synagogue did not believe that Yeshua can do all these miracles. But Jairus evidently believed that Yeshua can and has seen and heard that Yeshua healed people, sick people, uh, brought sight to blind, uh, the lame can walk. So continue reading. So here comes Jairus talking to Yeshua about his daughter who was about 12 years old and died from some kind of disease or ailment. And verse 42, for he had an only daughter about 12 years old and she was dying. But as he went, the crowds were pressing against him. So Yeshua said, okay, I'm coming to Jairus' home. He's on his way with Jairus to go uh, heal his daughter. But then the the crowd became even more and more numerous and they're pressing against Yeshua because they wanted to get close to him and, and want to touch him probably. And, and they were touching and, and, and trying to get closer to him for, for, for reasons of wanting to know uh, where he's going, what he's doing. So let's continue reading. 
verse 43 onward, and a woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years. This woman was bleeding for 12 long years and could not be healed by anyone. She had went to physicians. She went to different medical facilities. She went to different doctors. She went to different nurse practitioners. She went to different physical doctors, uh, nurses, nurse practitioners, health and wellness center. She done went everywhere for 12 years. This woman spending her money, given to different physicians and medical professionals and nothing has helped her. Continue reading. Came up behind him. This is the woman who had been hemorrhaging for 12 years. Came up behind Yeshua, Jesus, and touched the fringe of his cloak. And immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Immediately her bleeding stopped when she touched him. Touched the hem of his garment. Touched the, and it says in the Amplified Bible, it says, Verse 43, and a woman who has suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years and has spent all her living upon physicians and could not be healed by anyone came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately her flow of blood ceased. And I'm going back to New American Standard. Verse 45, and Jesus said, who is the one who touched me? See, this is very important in our, on our quest, on our search for healing, physical healing, emotional healing, mental healing, financial healing, spiritual healing, we must touch the hem, the fringes of Yahweh's son, Yeshua's garment. And Yeshua noticed immediately that someone had touched him. Now, <laughs> you say, wow, all these people are crowding around Yeshua even his disciples said, well, yeah, you got all these people following you and they're pressing against you. A lot of people are touching you, sure. So let's continue reading and see what happens. And while they were all denying it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing in on you. So even Peter knows that while these, all these people are coming around you, sure, they're you know, elbowing and touching and you know, brushing against him and trying to get closer to him. Continue reading. But Jesus said, Yeshua said, someone did touch me. So all these other people are denying. If you, now, that's something that we kind of gloss. So let's go back to verse 44. Okay, came up behind him. This is a woman, touched the fringe of his garment cloak, and immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Verse 45, and Jesus said, who is the one who touched me? He asking the crowd of people who was there, who is the one who touched me? He wanted to know who was the one who touched him. And then it's interesting, uh, while they were all denying it, the crowd, the people coming around Yeshua, coming to want to be next to him and near him, denied touching him. I think that's very interesting. They all denied it. And going to the Amplified, when all were denying it, people were denying the crowds of people following Yeshua wherever he goes, just to see what kind of miracles he's going to do. And I guess they deny touching him, but Yeshua felt someone who actually touched him. Let's continue reading. But Jesus says, someone did touch me for I was aware that power had gone out of me. And then let's read that in the Amplified. And, but Jesus says, someone did touch me for I perceived that Healing power has gone forth from me. This means that we can actually possess and gain the healing power of Yeshua when we touch him, the hem of his garment. We're going to go in more detail about what that means in this lesson. So continue reading. When the woman saw that she had not escaped, noticed, she came trembling and fell down before him and declared in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. This is from the New American Standard reading in verse 47. The woman saw that she could not escape notice. She knew that the people saw her. They all knew 
they all knew that she had this 12 years of bleeding issue of blood hemorrhaging. They all knew about her, probably avoided her when she came around. They probably gossip about her, said negative and ungodly things about her, probably laughed at her. These people all knew who this woman was. So, but she came trembling and fell down before Yeshua and declare in the presence of all the people. She told everyone there, including Yeshua, the disciples and all the crowd of people, why she came to touch Yeshua. She did not deny touching him. That's something that is a revelation too that the Heavenly Father Yahweh gave me. Some people would deny touching because they didn't touch Yeshua. But this woman faithfully and outwardly said that she touched him and told why she touched Yeshua's garment and him his garment. And she had been immediately healed. Now let's go to verse 48 in the New American Standard. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now let's read the same verse in the Amplified. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, your confidence and trust in me has made you well. Go enter into peace, untroubled, undisturbed well-being. And so this is the revelational knowledge, information Heavenly Father gave me about these verses in John, I'm sorry, in Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, I'm going to my notes now. This woman touched the hem fringes garment of Yeshua. And this is because, as Yeshua has said in this verse in Luke chapter 8, faith and confidence in knowing that he can and will heal is what made her whole, made her completely well. And not only physical well, but she's going to have emotional wellness because he says in verse 48, in the Amplified Bible, it says, go enter into peace. That means untroubled, undisturbed well-being. She's going to have emotional wellness because now she's no longer having this physical ailment of bleeding and hemorrhaging. She's going to have emotional wellness, mental wellness, physical wellness, and even financial wellness because she will, will not be spending her money on doctors and physicians who cannot help her, who did not help her. So her faith in believing in the Most High Almighty Yahweh Son, Yeshua. See, all the crowd around Yeshua following him and pressing up against him, as Peter said, they did not touch him because they did not have faith and belief that he can heal and that he had the power from Yahweh to do the miraculous miracle signs and wonders. They were just following him. The crowd was just following Yeshua because they want to see what he's going to do next. Wow, what is Yeshua going to do next? What is going to do next? Uh, they're just gossiping, talking, and following. But they did not touch him because they didn't have faith and belief in him. The woman, the one with the issue of blood and Blind men and others that Yeshua had healed. He healed the blind to see. He healed the lame to walk. He healed the one with the issue of blood. And later on, we're going to talk about Jairus and his daughter. They have action faith. And I call it action faith because they put action to their faith and belief in Yeshua that he can heal. This is by the woman, actually, the woman issued blood, actually physically walking, crawling over to Yeshua's garment to touch the fringes in the hem of his garment. While all the crowd, the people just follow along to see what Yeshua's going to do, they were not touching the hem. They were probably, you know, elbowing and brushing up against him, but they were not having that sincere, genuine, true, honest faith and belief in Yeshua. Now, the woman said, if I can just touch the hem, the fringes of Yeshua's garment, she knew that if she can just touch just the, a little fringe of his garment, that she would be made well and whole. 
that is very remarkable because all these other people were standing up and brushing up against Yeshua and pressing up against him. And they <laughs> did not have any idea, didn't have any, uh, they did not have any, uh, they didn't have anything in their mind about wanting to be healed. They probably I had, they all probably had excellent health. <laughs> the ones in the crowds, they, they didn't have any financial issues. They were wealthy. They had plenty of money. They had plenty of food, clothing, and shelter. They had plenty of clothing, uh, transportation. They, they were not sick. They were just there to see what Yeshua was going to do because they did not have this power that came from Yeshua to heal the woman with issue of blood. Because of her faith and belief in Yeshua, knowing that he can do this is what healed her. And in order to touch the hem of Yeshua's garment, today, if we want to touch the hem of Yeshua's garment today, even though Yeshua is right now sitting at the right hand of the Almighty Yahweh Him, Kraken versus Yod Hey Vav Hey El Gabo El El Yon, the Most High. His servants, children, servants, remnant, his servants, children, remnant, his ones who are true followers and believers of him, his word, his holy father, the almighty Yahweh, we will have to read, study, and meditate and do the almighty Yahweh word, his holy scriptures, with faith and belief in those holy words that we are reading and studying and meditating and put action to our faith that we have in the almighty Yahweh and his son, the Messiah. Now the woman bled for 12 years. That's a long time to have a health issue. I know there's another uh, incident in the Bible where Yeshua healed a man who was sick and lame for 38 years. Wow. And so people have long issues. These are not only physical ailments and diseases that we have may have been carrying for many months and years. And but these are also financial illnesses and sickness and diseases. These are mental sicknesses, illness, disease. These are emotional and sickness and diseases that people are harboring and 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 festering and and they are holding in, can be healed by Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, when he or she have, first of all, we must repent of all our sins. That's important. We have to ask forgiveness for all our sins to the Heavenly Father. We ask the Heavenly Father. Then we ask the Heavenly Father to help change us to be more like his son, Yeshua, be more like his his uh, faithful disciples who follow the Heavenly Father of the Word. We want to be more like the Word of God. Y'all ask the Heavenly Father to put the Word in us as we read the Word. We keep the Word in us and we live the Word. And then by faith, our faith is growing as we are believing and trusting and reading and, and spending time in the Heavenly Father's love letters, the Holy Scriptures, and that will build up our faith to believe in the Heavenly Father. So, this woman, 12 years of bleeding, she went to doctors. She trusted in humans to heal her and help her. She went to physicians, medical professionals, and no physician or anyone else could help her. She was financially broke. She was like on her last straw. She was the last straw that broke the camel's back, as they say. She was down to pennies in her pockets or shekels, if you want to say that being in he Israel Hebrew. So the woman, there was a crowd around Yeshua. The woman bleeding for 12 years. She coming faithfully in belief and confidence, crawling even to touch. In order to touch the hem of Yeshua's garment, she was humbling herself down on the ground. We must humble ourselves down to Yeshua, Almighty Yahweh Elohim's created universe's level of touching. In order to touch the hem of the garment of the fringes, we have to bow down. We must humble ourselves. And this woman of 12 years of bleeding, hemorrhaging, she humbled herself, not only physically, but 
emotionally and mentally and spiritually. These people were crowding around Yeshua who denied touching him. <laughs> they said, oh no, we didn't touch you, but we're elbowing up next to you. We're, And then the woman who with the issue of 12 years of bleeding comes, she make her way through the crowd somehow. That's how confidence and faith and trust she knows if she touched the hem and fringes of Yeshua's garment, she would be well. So she somehow maneuvered her way through the crowd and she touched Yeshua's fringe garment, the hem. We today can touch the hem, fringes, and garment of the Almighty Yahweh, His Son, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth, when we are studying, meditating, reading the love letters, the Holy Scriptures, the Torah, Tanakh, Brikadosh, the Old New Testament, this is how we touch the hem of Yeshua's garment. Because Yeshua, as we read in the book of John, is the Word made flesh. So since Yeshua is the, the embodiment of the Almighty's word in flesh when he was walking upon the earth, now he is in heaven sitting at the right hand of the Almighty created King of Universes. We touch him by spending time in our private place of prayer, reading, study, meditating, learning how to love the Heavenly Father, how to obey him and trust and believe in him, loving him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we loving our neighbors, we love ourselves, we're learning how to do his word. And this is how we are touching the hem of Yeshua's garment. And this is building up our faith and confidence in the Almighty Yahweh and his son, the Messiah, Yeshua, how we can be financially healed, emotionally healed, mentally healed, spiritually healed, physically healed, this is not rocket science to say. We just need to have our body, mind, soul, and spirit focused on obeying, seeking, and serving the Almighty Yahweh, trusting in Him, believing Him, loving Him. And also, we will be coming to the Heavenly Father through the Son, Messiah, with this faith and confidence, just like the woman with the issue of the 12 years of hemorrhaging, bleeding, she was immediately healed, it says. Immediately healed on the spot. Something that she had been experiencing for 12 long years of bleeding and hemorrhaging, that probably was very embarrassing for her. She couldn't get out. She only got out this time because she wanted to touch the hem and garment and fringes of Yeshua, the, the Messiah. She probably had to stay home most of the time of all the bleeding that she had. She had to have, wear special clothing. She had She's spending money on doctors and other kind of methods of trying to cover up this terrible disease. And she ha had to go out, do her shopping, maybe at different times of the day when the, the crowds were not as, as big or large. But she took a chance because she heard that Yeshua was in her area, in her neighborhood. She said, I will be healed if I touch the hem fringes of Yeshua's garment. And she did this with a humble heart, confidence knowing that she would be healed because she has the true, sincere, genuine faith in Yeshua that he can do this. And he did it. So let's go to Jairus. So Jairus, a synagogue official, coming to get Yeshua to heal his daughter who was 12 years old. I thought that was very comparison. The daughter was 12 and the woman bleeding for 12 years. And so now as Yeshua has finished, you know, talking to the woman who has been immediately healed from the issue of blood for 12 years, people are crying out saying this. Let's go to verse um, 49 and Amplified. While he was still speaking, this is Yeshua still speaking, a man from the house of the director of the synagogue came and said to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Do not weary and trouble the teacher any further. Continue reading verse 15 onward. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. 
simply believe in me as able to do this and she shall be made well. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. Just those five people and, 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 and six, sure, it sure makes six. Only those five people, Peter, John, James, and the fathers and, and the father and mother of the girl who, who just passed away. She was 12 years, their only child that they have. Verse 52, and all were weeping for him, bewailing her. But he said, do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And continue reading. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing full well that she was dead. Continue reading. And grasping her hand, he called, saying, child, arise from the sleep of death. And her spirit returned from death. And she arose immediately and he directed that she should be given something to eat. Now let's break down these verses. These two different situations are similar. Jairus had faith in Yeshua to heal his daughter. The woman with the issue of blood had faith that Yeshua can heal her hemorrhaging and 12 long years of disease that she was carrying. Both Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood had similar faith, the faith of action, because Jairus, an official of the synagogue, physically came to Yeshua to ask him to come and heal his daughter. The woman with the issue of blood physically went to Yeshua to touch the hem of his garment to become immediately whole and well and healed financially, emotionally, mentally, spiritually healed and physically healed. So now Jairus, after the people said, oh, don't worry about bothering Yeshua. Your daughter is dead. But Yeshua has a different answer, a different response to that. Let's go to the New American Standard. But when Jesus heard this, he answered him, do not be afraid any longer, only believe, and she will be made well. Only believe, and she will be made well. What happened after Yeshua said this to the people? First of all, do not be afraid. Satan, the devil, our ultimate enemy, uses fear, confusion, emotional distraughtness, depression, dis despondency. He, Satan uses the emotions of people to cause fear. Because the people around Jairus told him, oh, your daughter is dead. Don't bother the teacher. But Yeshua said something different. <laughs> Do not be afraid any longer from the New American Standard. Only believe. And she will be made well. Continue reading and amplify in the New American Standard. Verse 51, when he came to the house, when Yeshua, the Messiah, came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him itself. See, when you got some serious issues going on in your life, there are certain people you have to cast out, not come in, and certain people you allow in your space. Because Certain individuals who don't believe the people who say, oh, don't bother the master. Your daughter's dead. Those people you cast out, don't let them inside your space of this situation that you're going through. You may be financially destitute. You may be financially broke, emotionally broke, mentally broke, physically broke, spiritually broke because People are saying negative words, think, saying ungodly, unpleasant, untruthful words that can affect people's emotions and physical and mental and financial uh, entities' cap uh, capabilities. But the ones who are holy and have faith and belief and trust in Almighty Elohim, those ones who are 
following and believing and doing the Heavenly Father's Holy Word, you allow them in your circle, in your space. Because this is what Yeshua did. <laughs> he said, when Yeshua came to the house, he did not allow anyone to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the mother and father of the child. Just those five people were entered into this room where the little girl was laying down and she was asleep. And let's continue reading. Now, all these people were weeping and lamenting for her. But he said, stop weeping for she had not died, but is asleep. And they began laughing at him, knowing that she has died, had died. So these are either the parents weeping and it may be people maybe outside in another room. Maybe there's an adjacent room where Peter, James, and John, the parents of the daughter, and Yeshua, and the little girl was in this room. But then there was another probably room close by where they can hear all the wailing and the weeping and the crying. And Yeshua said, hey, wait a minute. Stop that weeping for she has not died but is asleep. And they all begin laughing at Yeshua saying those words. Because they thought that the little girl, the only child of these parents, had died. So now Yeshua has told these people to be quiet, stop weeping and wailing, stop laughing. So now, verse 54, he, however, took her by the hand and called, saying, child, arise. Now, let's go to the Amplified, reading the same verse. And grasping her hand, he called, saying, Child, arise from the sleep of death. This is Yeshua the Messiah, the one who is and was and is to come, the son of the Almighty Creator, King of the Universes, saying to this child of 12 years of age who has some type of deathly disease or illness says child arise from the sleep of death and verse 55 from the amplified says and her spirit returned from death and she arose immediately the woman with the issue of blood after she touched the fringes and the hem and the garment of yeshua was healed immediately from her Bleeding of 12 years or hemorrhaging for 12 years, she was immediately healed. And the little girl who was 12 years of age was healed immediately, arose from death immediately, arose from the sleep of death immediately. She rose, arose immediately, it says here in verse 55 of Amplified. Let's go to the New American Standard, verse 55. And her spirit returned, and she got up immediately. And he, Yeshua, gave orders for something to be given her to eat. So we see here the Heavenly Father uses people, places, and things for his glory, honor, and praise, and purpose. He's using Yeshua while he was on the earth. To show the power, the grace, the mercy, the love, the the awesomeness of the Almighty Yahweh and his son, the Messiah Yeshua. Again, we want to reiterate how we can touch the hem of Yahweh Elohim's son, Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. We touch the hem of Yeshua's garment to receive his feeling of power in our lives by reading studying, meditating, and doing the holy words of the Almighty Yahweh. These love letters, scriptures, books of the Bible, Torah, Jemot, Brikasha, Old New Testament, are for the humble, obedient, clay vessel servants, children, remnants, to learn how to touch with faith 
active faith of believing and trusting, confidence in believing and trusting in the Heavenly Father, Son, and Messiah, Yeshua, to have this financial wellness, spiritual wellness, emotional and mental wellness comes from the Heavenly Father and His power through His Son, the Messiah, through the Holy Spirit. The Heavenly Father has His holy angels also around His humble, obedient, clay, vessel, servant, to your remnant, Psalm 91. So this is how we can touch the hem of Yeshua's garment. I was so elated and just rejoicing that this is how I can touch the Heavenly Father's Son, Yeshua's garment, the fringes of his garment by spending time in my private place of prayer. I hope you have a private place of prayer. Will you go and spend time reading, studying, meditating, praising and praying and crying out to Heavenly Father, asking for his guidance and direction, wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, understanding, his favor, his discernment, his anointing, his guidance and leading in every situation, every matter. We see here in these two different stories that these people have similar, similar similarities. Similarly, in, in, in uh, similar situations. So, the woman with the issue of blood had active faith or confidence, believing, knowing that Yeshua can heal her from her hemorrhaging and 12 years of bleeding. And she shows it by active faith of actually physically going to touch and bound down to touch the Heavenly Father's Son's Yeshua's fringes of his garment. Jairus the official of the synagogue showed his confidence and faith in Yeshua to heal his daughter who had some type of debilitating disease and illness and was dying. So these stories that we just read in Luke chapter 8 is for us today, how we can spend time with Heavenly Father, Every day we need to spend time in his word every day. If it's five minutes or five hours, the Heavenly Father knows our schedule, what we have to do, where we have to work and where we got to go and meetings, appointments. But it's important that we spend time with him every day. Praising him and praying to him. Listening to him and heeding him. That is how our faith is being built up and increased when we spend time with him every day in his word. I hope that this new message that we have just finished fellowshipping in the Heavenly Father's Holy Word would be a blessing to all of us to help us because as the days of our preparation journey get worse and they're going to be heightened and increased because more of Yahweh Heen's correctional judgment, horrific humbling acts, actions and events, we're going to be increasing upon this earth as a special thing coming. The Heavenly Father, Almighty Elohim, is going to do a correctional judgment, humbling act that's coming this autumn and winter of 2022 and 2023 and beyond. We need to get into his holy word every day. We need to spend time with Heavenly Father in his holy word. This is just one of the Bibles that I use, but I want to show it to you. If you do not have a physical paper Bible and you live in the United States of America, you can go to our website and we will send it to you free. Free of charge. No, you don't pay any shipping. You don't pay any, any kind of fees. We want to get the Heavenly Father's Holy Word into your hands because let's say the grid goes down. Let's say there's no electricity. Let's say all you have is a flashlight in your Bible. Hallelujah. You got a roof of your head. You got a flashlight. You got a Bible. You got some food somewhere, you know, prepare. You got some food that you've been saving for, for emergencies, but there's no electricity and you can't read your Bible without light. So the flashlight would be the light that you read your paper Bible. Maybe you don't have a way to charge your phone and you can't read the Bible on your electronic devices. The paper Bible is one of the best resources to have when we are going through some emotional, physical, mental, spiritually, and financial challenges. 
So if you need a Bible, go to our website, butterflyjourney.org, click on free Holy Bible, and we will mail one to you if you live in the United States of America. We want to end this wonderful teaching on how we can touch the fringes hem of Yeshua's garment. We're going to end it in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty Yahweh, we come and bow down to you, to your thrones, humble as we know how. We come to ask you to forgive us for all our sins, have mercy on our sinful souls. We come to ask that you help us to forgive others who have hurt us. Help us to forgive so you can forgive us. Heavenly Father, help us to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Heavenly Father, help us to read, study, meditate, and do your word every day, Heavenly Father, with your Holy Spirit, your Holy Son, your Holy Hands, your Holy Presence in us, on us, around us, and through us, Heavenly Father. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you help us to spend time every day in our private place of prayer, reading your word, listening to your word, heeding your word, and doing your word as you are increasing our faith, as we are increasing our confidence in you to become healed in any type of capacity or entity that we need healing in, Heavenly Father. Those who need physical, emotional, mentally, financial, spiritual healing, Heavenly Father, let us draw closer to you and your Holy Word, your Holy Spirit, through your Holy Son, the Messiah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your many blessings. We can never thank you enough. Prepare us to live holy, pure, and righteous in these days of Noah, days of Lot, and these last days of this age that we're now living in, Heavenly Father, prepare us for what's coming down the road, the end of this year, this autumn and winter, and also 2022, 2023, and beyond. Help us to be prepared. Prepare us where we can have food, clothing, and shelter, electricity, and water when things start getting worse on this earth, Heavenly Father. We want you and we need you, and we love you, Heavenly Father, Almighty Yahweh, and your Son, the Messiah. We love you, love you, love your word. We love you, and we want to be found a good and faithful servant when the Messiah comes. We want to be found a good and faithful servant when your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and that we thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for your time. May the Heavenly Father, Almighty Yahweh, the Him, Creator, King of the Universes, bless you in the name of Yeshua. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Thank you.